One thing I really like about it is it has a cord storage on it. You can wrap your cord around. I like that feature right there. Here's the power switch. It's a toggle type. You can take out the key for safety purposes if you want. It will not turn on. Just above this, this is a reset button. So if this breaker trips for any reason, maybe you're pressing it too hard, motor gets overworked, it should draw this out and snap that, and then you can wait for it to cool and reset it. Uh, same thing on the power cord here. You want to make a drip loop or a, a drip leg, you know, run it down up over a bucket or something so any water that might come down this cord can't get to where it's plugged in. I'm going to do a dry run here. I don't have the pump itself turned on, but I just want to hear it. So here we go. It might get a little loud. Sounds just like a direct drive chop saw to me. Here is a shot of the saw in its entirety. Like I had noted, it does not come with a stand. That is an optional component. As well as I did not note, but it does not come with a blade. You have to supply your own blade as well. Evidently, they have changed the water pump since there is no way to meter the water that's coming out of it. And the new pump has about a six foot cord on it, which I find to be a benefit, even though it seems like it's not because it's extremely long. But it does create its own drip loop down here. So there's no way for water to get out of that pan and traverse down and all the way back up into that connector and cause a short. On this back corner by the pump marked in the tub itself, there's a maximum and a minimum water level. I have filled it up to the maximum level. You just want to be within that range so you don't run your pump dry. All right, well before I run the saw, I want to make sure it was aligned properly at the factory. So what I'm doing is I'm coming in here with a machinist square, which is extremely accurate, and I'm referencing this fence or this backstop right here and make sure that the blade is 90 degrees to that. So I'm just slowly coming up to the blade and the blade does have a small raised rim so I'm only checking here and here. There's going to be a gap in the middle for sure. So this may wash out but I need to I need to look here. Yeah and that that that's dead on from the factory. That is that's really good right there so this I don't have to worry about in the event yours is not 90 degrees to this right here uh, you would adjust the rail system on the opposite side of the saw that had the grooves in it and you would fine-tune that back and forth and lock it in until you got that correct the next one I'm going to check is to make sure that it is 90 degrees to this table to the blade Okay, well I did find a factory misalignment here. I'm just setting this down on the table and I'm bringing it up to where it just contacts that blade right there. And it's contacting at the top, you can't see that, but I'm going to take a light and I'm going to shine it through the back. Hope you can see that light coming down here. It's a very odd angle, but it's a good sixteenth of an inch off at the bottom of that blade from being 90 degrees to that table. So I will be making an adjustment here. Uh, this is something that will benefit others if, if they find their saws are not cutting correctly. So I'll take you through this as well. Alright, well here's the adjustment right here for setting the 90 degrees directly to the table. If we loosen this up, there's a nut right here that is jamming everything together and preventing this bolt from spinning. This bolt rests on this casting right here, so when you loosen this up and bring it down, that's supposed to bring you dead on to 90 degrees to your table. Well, this is the problem and why mine is out. So what I'm going to end up doing here is loosening up this nut, and I'll rest it down, and I'll turn this while looking at the gap that I had just noted until I close it up. And then once I close it up, I'll tighten the nut back up, and then I'll move things out of place and double check it and fiddle with it until I get it dead on. The 45 is the same way. I'll be doing that independently of the video, but it's the exact same process. There's just another one of those right down here, so when you tilt it, it connects another part, contacts another part of the casting. 
but you would do that the exact same way. Check one, check the other, dial them in until you're satisfied, and then move on. Everything has been adjusted to my satisfaction, all is looking good. I've covered my machinery over here with a tarp to keep it dry. We're getting ready to do a wet test here just to see what the water pump does. So here we go. Okay, yeah, I did spray a little bit on my tarp. The back of the handle here and the machine's got some water on it. And there, of course, is some down on the floor. Uh, I'd never expected it to catch 100% of everything. You know, you'd typically be doing this in an area uh, where you don't mind getting water. All right, well, we're going to do our first test here on a piece of tile. I'm going to try to take a small sliver off the side just to start and just see what happens. So here we go. Here's a shot of the first cut on the saw. There is literally almost no tear out in here. Just a small little bit of chipping. This is the little sliver I just took off. Hopefully you can see how thin it was. Of course when the water comes down and hits the top of the tile it starts cascading out in a 360 degree radius. So you certainly want, don't want to do this in a space that you care about all that all right well I'm gonna nip a little corner off right here I've got the fence set up here to 45 hopefully you can see that to get to the edge of this 12 by 12 pile I'm having to run it up this way and line it up with the fence and then take this corner off so I'm gonna go ahead and do that And again, a nice smooth cut, very, very little chip out. And here's the fence set up for a couple repetitive cuts.
Here's one thing I don't particularly care for. The wheels are down on this end, the cutting end, and the handle is down at the other end. And that seems natural. You go back and you get the handle and you'd wheel it about your job. But the bung to drain the pan is on this end. And if you can see this cross support right here. What I would want to do is put a five gallon bucket on the floor, pull the bung, and let it drain into the bucket. But you can't do it that way. There would be room on this end to set a bucket inside of that rail if the bung was down on this end. Well you can't just spin it around because the pump reservoir is right here. So what I'm considering doing is I'm actually going to mount the wheels or actually turn the stand so the wheels are on the opposite end. That will in essence render the handle useless but I could still move it around by simply lifting it up over here and it would be a lot easier to drain. That's just something to consider. So far through my limited testing my final thoughts are it's a decent product and it was certainly an affordable price. Now, I don't think this would be considered something for the professional use, but a hardcore DIYer like myself, this fits the bill. It does what I want it to do, it's going to do the job I have for it in hand, and in essence is going to pay for itself in short order. So, collectively speaking, I don't think you could go wrong. I had to do very little to it in terms of adjustment or modifications. And all in all, it's going to work for me. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching and good luck.